During the occupation of Soviet Union, not only men, but also women and girls stood up to fight the enemy. Resistance was massive, but unfortunately many partisan and underground women fell into the hands of Hitler's Gestapo or security services. What happened in the dungeons is difficult to fathom even today, because it is beyond the limits of human understanding and perception. After the most severe torture, partisans and underground fighters as a rule were executed either publicly or secretly in order to cover up the traces of crimes. The fates of some of the partisan girls vividly demonstrated what awaited them in enemy captivity and how terribly their short lives ended. First Public Execution it is believed that the very first execution of underground fighters took place publicly in Minsk on October 26, 1931. Twelve prisoners had signs on their chests. We are partisans who fired on German troops. Among them were also two girls. The first was Olga Sherbatsevich. The name of the second was established only after the war. It was 17-year-old Masha Brusnikin. Sherbatsevich as part of the underground group was engaged in transporting wounded Red Army soldiers from the hospital to partisan detachments, giving them fake documents and civilian clothes. According to some reports, at least 40 people were saved from the concentration camp this way. The irony of fate is that one of the rescued wounded commanders of the Red Army betrayed the girl. However, after the war in 1951, he was shot. Olga Sherbatsevich was captured along with her son. During the torture, Shabatsevich was beaten to such a state that she could not return to the cell on her own. Other underground workers were also brutally tortured by the Nazis. The execution itself was staged with demonstrative cynicism. Each step of the condemned was scrupulously recorded by a photographer. Due to the fact that the Germans took pictures in Minsk, the photographer, a local resident, risking his life, made several copies which he kept secretly until the city was liberated. It was thanks to these photos that the details of the execution became known. The first group was murdered at the drama theater, three people. The second was hanged on the Karl Marx Street, the third on Freedom Square. The last one, which included Masha Brusnikina, was hanged on the gate of the East Factory. The photographs showed that the Nazi could not force Masha, already mutilated by torture, to turn to face the crowd. The girl held her back, so she was hanged. The Damish Sisters After the occupation of Orsha, Olga Damish, who was 16-year-old, created an underground group of young people who passed flyers around the city and collected information about the enemy. Later, the girl went to a partisan detachment where she fought so well that the Germans promised 10,000 rye marks for her head, as well as even land and livestock. Olga's sister Lydia became a scout of the same detachment, having received the nickname Chick. The girl, who did not arouse suspicion among the Germans, carried out several fairly serious acts of sabotage, for example by blowing up a fuel tank which paralyzed railway traffic for four hours. The next task was to hang over a note to the mother of one of the partisans. However, Lydia was stopped by a German patrol. The note became irrefutable evidence which was recorded in the protocol of interrogation. In the course of the work, it turned out that she constantly kept in touch with her sister Olya, who has been in the partisan detachment for a year. The document said, Lydia was arrested. Her mother could not be arrested, so she fled to the squad. During the torture, the girl's face was burned with a cigarette. Then her spine was broken, after which, already immobilized, she was shot. Nadezhda Bogdanova At the beginning of the war, she was a nine-year-old girl from an orphanage and became one of the most unique witnesses of both the atrocities of the Nazis and executions. The fact is that Nadezhda was executed twice. The first time being a liaison of a partisan detachment operating in the Vitebsk region, the girl fell under a roundup. Together with dozens of other detained men, she was taken outside the city to be shot. Nadia managed to fall a second before the bullet hit her, and at the night she quietly got out from under the bodies of the dead. After that, the young partisan began to take revenge on the Nazis for her friend, who was shot that day. 
and did it so successfully that even managed to single-handedly explode one enemy echelon. In February 1943, Nadezhda received an order to blow up the bridge near the village of Karasilo. After the bridge was mined, the girl was detained by a German patrol. Having found particles of a substance similar to explosives in the basket, the Germans at first had some doubts. But when the bridge exploded and collapsed, it became clear that they had caught a partisan. During a torture, a star was burned on the girl's back. She was thrown on a red-hot stove, poured with ice water in the cold, but the girl was silent. In the end, she was simply thrown out into the cold outside the village and left to die. However, she survived, which was a miracle. Only after the war, doctors managed to restore her sight and hearing. Nadezhda Bogdanova became the only Soviet pioneer which survived two executions. Unknown Partisans On November 3, 1941, in the village of Berisova, Tula region, five people were executed by the Germans on suspicion of being partisans. In fact, there is no documentary evidence of this, especially since the public execution took place on the second day after the village was occupied by the Nazi troops. Among the executed men, there were two. The other three were women, Mitrofanova, Preskovia, Panfilovna, Frikina, and Merkulova. Their names are unknown. When women were hanged, the punishers staged a real performance. After the women were hanged, for unclear reasons, the executed Merkulova was removed from the gallows and placed on her knees in front of the other executed. Mogilev Underground Workers After the occupation of Mogilev, an underground group consisting of hospital workers was actively operating in the city. Doctors secretly transferred medicines to the partisan detachments, even blood which they managed to steal from the hospital where the wounded Germans were being treated. But the very first group secretly transported the wounded Red Army soldiers and civilians from the hospital. After the traitor betrayed the group, three of its members were publicly hanged on Glory Square, at that time Soviet Square. Among those executed was the doctor Alexandra Porshina. However, the group having revived continued to act further. Moreover, doctors even went to partisan detachments and performed operations on the wounded. Part of the group was arrested in May 1943. After inhumane torture, all five people were publicly hanged on June 24, 1943. Simulated executions this madness was done by the punishers in order to force one of the leaders of the partisan detachment to surrender. His wife, Anastasia Reduk, was the deputy head of the underground group operating in Kaladishitsi. In 1943, on the denunciation of a traitor, the group was arrested. The Nazis took both the children of Reduk and the leader of the Molokovich group. After brutal torture, both women were publicly hanged but at first they witnessed the most real horror. The Nazi took the children of Anastasia Reduke, three daughters and a son, to the square, and with a confluence of people prepared to shoot. The condition for the cancellation of the execution was the surrender of the commissar of the partisan detachment, Arseny Reduke. Such a pseudo-execution was carried out four times. What the unfortunate mother experienced, one can only guess. Fortunately, the partisans were able to carry out an operation to save the children. Inhumane Torture According to some documents and recollections of eyewitnesses, after the liberation of the Soviet Union, the investigators established the facts of what the Nazis and collaborators were doing in the torture chambers with the detained partisans and underground fighters. In order for a girl to name, for example, the rest of the members of a partisan detachment, or an underground group, the Nazis detained the first teenagers they came across, brought them for interrogation, and began to torture until the partisans spoke. Almost no one could withstand such torture. Some could have their chests cut off, or their tongues torn out before execution. Nazis executioners often and actively used a medieval rag to twist joints, burned organs with red-hot tongues, cut off ears and gouged out eyes. After such torture, any execution was considered a relief. But sometimes the execution itself turned into torture, when the female partisans, who no longer understood anything from pain, were thrown into a water reservoir 
burned alive or thrown into a well or mine. The facts are known of how girls were brutally raped, usually by policemen, and then they disfigured the girls' faces and broke their limbs. It got to the point that some partisans were brought to such a state that the Nazis themselves carried them in their arms to the place of execution.